try to set up the All right, welcome everyone. This is a webinar titled Five Simple and Powerful Ways to Stay in Touch with Previous Clients. That's the short version. I was gonna to add to that sentence, increase word of mouth referrals and differentiate your remodeling business. Um, I'm seeing a bunch of friendly faces. Most of you I've seen before know from something or another. It doesn't surprise me because uh, the way you heard about this was either through Remodelers Community, remodelerscommunity.com, the private Facebook group, or you're on my email list. Um, see some new names and, and welcome. Hi, Bar Baker. Good to, good to see you on here. Um, the way I usually run webinars is not super stuffy and formal, frankly, I guess. That's the way I do my podcast. That's the way I do a lot of my work. Um, so I'd love some good interaction back and forth. And today I, I was thinking about creating some PowerPoint slides and everything like that. And I decided against it um, partially because it didn't have to be done. Secondly, I uh, just decided to kind of, let me preface it with this. In, life is made up of choices, true or false. You can write in there. Life is made up of choices. Does anybody have any comments on that? It's true. Rhonda says. And when it comes to your business or even marketing your business, marketing your remodeling business, it comes down to choices. So let me, I'll, I'll, I'll start here because this is where my head's at. It's something I was talking about this morning and it's, it's perfectly relatable to what we're looking at here. When it comes to marketing, your, two things. One, you are working in your business probably 90% of your time right? 90% of your time is working in the business, working with clients, taking care of the, just your business in general. Probably if you're doing well, 10% is working on your business. The time you're spending here solely focused on this, not multitasking, correct? Solely focused on this is, is in the, is on the business time, on the business time, right? What we do so often is we take that 10%, that limited amount of time we have to work on the business and we fragment that small percentage of the time amongst 10 different things, 10 different things. And all of a sudden we, we're making progress on multiple things, but we're not getting things through to completion. We're not implementing, which is, which is so, that's, that's the biggest word that hopefully my coaching comes through to you guys as is, is it's about implementing. You guys have many, many ideas, plenty of information on what you could be doing, but what is the priority thing to be doing and what can you implement? So on this thought of, you know, we make choices. I had a choice this morning to either create slides or have Bailey make create slides, or um, I was actually doing some other marketing. I was creating some Instagram stories. That's a choice I made because I decided the ROI of some of the other work I was doing was greater than the ROI of creating slides. I've got a perfectly good presentation just in this PDF right here. So just something to think about. Um, when it comes to marketing your remodeling business in general, what I see so often is time spent, precious limited time spent to market your business on stuff that does not drive ROI, that is not top priority stuff. You may spend an hour researching the best ways to tag your photos on hows. And on the flip side, your most valuable marketing asset, your previous client, them in months or years. Does that make sense, right? One is, it's something you could be working on. You could fill in the blank with so many things that you could be spending your time on when it comes to marketing your business. And I see it so often where we're spending time on stuff that's not that important or nearly as valuable as other things. And this topic today of staying in touch with our previous clients, I've been doing this full time, 11 years, 10 of those years, just working with remodelers. And your, your most valuable marketing asset, the thing that you need to make sure is locked, loaded, solid before anything else in your marketing is staying in touch, developing, nurturing the relationships you have with your previous clients. These are, this is your most valuable marketing asset. These are people that already know, like, and trust you, which is our definition of marketing, getting someone who has a need to know, like, and trust you. These are the people that when you look at the dollars that are going in the top of your profit and loss statement this year, the people that, are, that are, you're generating revenue from, so often the biggest source of that revenue dollars in your bank account this year are coming from repeat work from previous clients or referrals from those previous clients. 
True or false? Give me some feedback. I like the interaction. You guys tracking me here? I'm trying to just kind of set the stage a little bit for this um, focus on previous clients and stay in touch with them. Sometimes I do this where I just make, I, this is from Game and uh, Design Remodeling. Um, and sometimes I host, host that up saying, I love it when people send me swag just in case somebody wants to send me something. You can find my address. We'll see. All right. Lisa's the only one giving me some feedback. All right. So let's, uh, let's kind of dig into just the five, the five steps. I've got some, this is how I usually do webinars, is not necessarily on the video side, but that's all right. I'm going to pull up the screen share. I'll leave my video going. Um, Josh, all right, cool. Interestingly, faults for us could be a result of a small previous client list. Cool. Cool. We'll talk about that actually um, maybe during the Q&A side, Josh. Lisa, um, kind of, you said, that's because I, I changed my business model, okay, which I'm a little familiar with, with that that you're doing. Um, so we can talk about that as well. For the most part, though, a lot of it is true. True, uh, what is the best way to stay in touch? Good question, Brandon. Brandon's like, all right, Kyle, we got the foundation. Let's dig in right into it. All right. So let's talk about what we're going to do. We're going to spend the next 20, 25 minutes just digging into five simple and powerful ways. How do we effectively stay in touch with our previous clients? I want to share uh, several just real practical, good, solid, proven ideas. And then hopefully we'll have, you know, we'll go for uh, an hour at the most and we'll have maybe 20, 25 minutes uh, at the second half here to just do open Q&A, whether it's questions related to this, um, whether it's taking the time for you to share your takeaways with me. I have technology where I could bring you on live. We might do a little bit of that depending on how we're going. But my biggest thing here is trying, for, I want you guys, a success for me here in the next 52 minutes, success would be for you to have one clear takeaway, just one clear takeaway that you're actually going to work to implement that you're gonna take action on, okay? So this first one could be just that. Uh, it's very, very practical um, and it works. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll set it up this way. Each one of you have a previous client list. It could be 20 people, it could be 50 people, it could be 500 people. Step one is to just have that list organized. Sometimes that is a pain in the butt task Sometimes you have a solid CRM system and that's really easy. Um, other times you start by just exporting out of QuickBooks all of your previous clients just to give you something to start with. Um, other times it might be exporting the list out of Outlook or Google Calendar or Google um, Gmail, whatever you might use. But first things first, who are your previous clients and how many do you have? That is a task that when I asked that to remodelers over the years, the majority of them aren't very organized with that. And believe me in me saying, it's your most valuable marketing asset. Referrals, repeat work, the no like and trust is already there. You know, let's start by getting that list organized. That could be your takeaway. All right, I'm just gonna pause there for a little dramatic effect. All right, now once you have that list, what do we do with it? So the first tip here is, says number one, call previous clients. This is very simple, it works. It doesn't cost you a lot. It does cost you some time, but it doesn't cost you a lot. So let me kind of set up how a lot of my remodelers do this. Um, you get a list and maybe you say, you know what, I'm going to call five previous clients this week. And that phone call can sound simply like this. Um, you know, hey, I was thinking about you this week, uh, thinking about you today, and I just wanted to call, see how you and the family are, and see how the job we did for you is holding up. Very simple. Right? I was thinking about you today. I wanted to extend a call to see how you and your family are doing and how the job we did for you is holding up. By the way, I've got this PDF. It's gonna, we're going to go through a lot of like templates, like copy paste type things, or even like the wording I just used. Um, so feel free to take notes, but I'll also get you guys a copy of this PDF. Um, what's just, so I'll, I'll tell you a story of Peter Dotson, one of my clients out in California, just started um, doing this. And Dennis Gaiman is on the line. Look at Dennis. I just, I just promoted you with Gaiman Design Remodeling. I think I mentioned it in passing and a couple weeks later, Dennis just sent me something. Anyways, hi Dennis. Um, one of my clients, Peter Dotson did this. He got his list organized. Um, he had his assistant just give him a couple names to call. And we were just on the phone last week 
and he said, all right, here's, here's what I've found so far. I've made several calls, uh, left a few voicemails, but I ended up talking to somebody that I haven't talked to in a couple years. Uh, we did a, a project, I can't remember if it was a kitchen uh, for them, but we did a project for them and we had a nice conversation. It was just good flowing conversation, kind of got caught up on some things. And then they said, hey, in the fall, we're actually going to be remodeling our master bathroom. We um, definitely want to be in touch with you about that. And they talked about that a little bit and kind of the timing and what they're looking to do. So was that a slam dunk? Did Peter get off the phone there with a lead that he can take action on right away? No. Are there a lot of times where I hear the result of these calls being, well, it's funny you called, AKA, we've been meaning to call you, we've been thinking about calling you, that type of, that type of response. Um, in Peter's case, he set up a reminder of when he's gonna call back. He's connected with this homeowner for the first time in a couple years, just reminded him that he was here. It's just practical, it's good, it's simple. It is very hard to argue that that approach to marketing is not worth your time, okay? So several, several little things related to this. One is, I've been thinking about this a lot lately. We think that just because we did a project with somebody that, and we did a good job for them and they were happy, that it's just a lock that future projects are coming to us. But when you go about your day in and day out, like they're pulling up behind your competitors' trucks. They are seeing yard signs from this company and that company. Um, you know, they, their niece just got married and she just got married to a carpenter that works for your competitor. Like there's a million different ways that people can be hearing and getting ads and seeing ads from people other than us. So we need to be proactive with staying in touch with them and reaching out to them and, in, and being on the offense and investing in the relationships you have. Does that make sense? Just gonna pause there and get some, give me some feedback. Are we, are we tracking here? I think there's a little delay in on a webinar. Yes, okay, yes. All right, cool. Give me some more interaction, people. So, a couple practical ideas here. Number one, get your list organized. Number two, just kind of practice a little bit, do a little batting practice on, you know, what you're, what you're gonna say and why. Um, number three, have, if you have an assistant or an office manager, somebody to, that could manage this for you, instead of you having this list or, you know, Rhonda, you said my list has 423, Lisa, you said 150, however big that list is. If you have somebody that's on your team and you're the one making these calls, put them in charge of selecting who you're gonna call each week. It's one, it's one less thing for you to kind of think about and do. If, if somebody puts it on my desk and says, here's three previous clients, these are your three for this week, that is going to be much more consistently acted on than if I have to pull up my full list, if I have to manage it. Oh, did I call them? Did I not call that? So put somebody on your team in charge of that. I've just been giving that advice over the last six months and it's been working really, really well for my remodelers. Okay. Um, and then a fourth kind of quick thought on this is one of the results of this could lead to somebody saying, you know, it wasn't a big enough deal that we wanted to call it to your attention, but you know, the, the door to the pantry is never just really closed properly, you know, and I don't know if you can, if you can help us with that or you can fix that. There's two ways to look at that. One is great, Kyle. Thank you. You had me make these calls and it turned into more work and I'm already busy, you know, and it's going to cost money. It's a callback, you know, or warranty thing. You could look at it that way, or you could look at it, which is the proper way of that's a marketing expense. We do not want satisfied clients. We don't want clients to say, yeah, the experience was okay. We want thrilled clients. We want to give them a remarkable experience. And you going back after the work, um, maybe it's been six months, a year, maybe heaven forbid it's been three years, and you go back and take care of something, that, that story that they have about you is incredible. And we should not undervalue that. So even if this turns into not that beautiful new kitchen remodeling lead that we hope these calls can turn into, but they turn into something where you need to take care of something after the fact, look at that as a marketing expense. You're, you're building relationship there. All right, cool. All right, so that, those could be some takeaways. Organizing your client list, calling previous clients. All right, that's number one of five simple ways. That's about the simplest as it gets. All right. Jim said, um, keys are to reach out to existing customers and be positioned as a value provider uh, for a lifetime client flow 
is transaction to customer to client to raving fan for ongoing business and referrals. Good. Yeah. You know, I think what you're getting at there, Jim, I, I don't know if I read it right, but you know, taking them from just a customer to a client, maybe a little more intimate to a raving fan. Right. And a lot of times what we do after the job is done and how we continue to stay in touch with them goes a long ways towards that. All right, cool. Next number two, number two is this is a little bit more complicated and I've got like four or five different examples, some more high touch and in depth than others. Um, but the, the thought behind number two way of staying in touch with previous clients, client appreciation events and remodeling related events. So I'll start with kind of a, a big one, which is, there's a Star Wars movie, uh, I, think, I don't know if it was last December, I think it was a year prior. There's another one uh, this December, by the way, this client's doing the exact same thing again. Um, and a lot of movie theaters will let you rent out a theater a day or two before a big movie is being premiered. This costs some money, right? This is a marketing investment. Um, one of my clients did this, they invited uh, previous clients, uh, kind of limited it to two tickets per family. So it ended up being a lot of uh, father's sons that came, mother's daughters, mother's sons, um, you know, or a couple, husband, wife, whatever the case is. They had a lot of that going on. He gave just a quick little, you know, thanks so much for, for coming out before the movie started. Uh, they also had just a little kind of happy hour at this theater. They had the opportunity to do that beforehand. And, you know, the, the primary reason he did it was just to build no like, and trust. It was a fun evening out. Certainly everybody enjoyed it. It was cool that they got to see a highly sought after movie that was about to be premiered before it even came out. Uh, he filled that theater up in a hurry, spent several, many thousand dollars on it, right? But it's just an idea of there's, there's all kinds of client appreciation events like that, that one being a big one that you could be kind of thinking about. Maybe it's even, you know, this isn't necessarily written here, but maybe it's more of a one-off. Um, you know, one of my clients over on the west side of Michigan, uh, his approach this year with previous clients is he wants to do some boat time. He's got a boat. He loves to fish. And he's just setting a goal to, to invite some of his key previous clients out just for an evening of fishing or a morning of fishing. No reason other than he really appreciates them and values them and wants to develop the relationship further and do something that he knows they enjoy and something that he certainly loves. Okay. So it's kind of a big example. Um, there's co-op dollars that might be available for that, et cetera. Um, many of my clients, maybe some of you guys are doing parade of home tours or maybe you're doing home shows. Okay. Parade of homes, home shows. Um, the thought of making sure beforehand you're sending out an invitation for some free tickets is just a really solid way of reaching out to previous clients and certainly inviting them to it and getting to see them at the event. So I have just a really solid template that you could copy paste for that. Um, this is one of my clients out in Nebraska, an email that we sent out to his previous client list, subject line, would you like tickets? And in this case, this was an email that was going out the week of. Every spring, the Remodelers Council of Lincoln organizes the tour of remodeled homes. This year, the tour consists of 19 remodeled homes, see the list here, um, give some details. We would love to provide you with two complimentary tickets to the event. To receive your tickets, simply reply to this email letting us know you'd like them. Make the, the first home you visit on the tour be the home we remodeled. We'll be there the whole weekend and have an envelope with your name on it with your tickets inside. Love to see you provide these tickets for you. Reply back if you're interested, etc. So that's kind of just a, a way that we decided to strategically uh, give them the tickets. If it's something home show related, certainly they respond back. You can mail them the tickets, but that little thing can go a long ways right? People remember where they got those tickets. They appreciate it, can continue to help you build know, like, and trust. It's also just a great way to reconnect with them. Um, we've used the remodeled home tours quite a bit to touch back with past clients. Excellent, Josh. You know, and, and just if that's been working, you know, yeah, keep leaning into that. You know, if, if you have, you know, for something like that, maybe you combine the first idea with this one, Josh, right? And the, the two, three weeks prior to the event, Dave, your partner, is making phone calls. You're making phone calls. And both of you maybe set a goal of, of calling 10 people each week and say, you know, we have a remodel home tour coming up and we'd love to get you some tickets. Go on offense a little bit. People appreciate that. So if you have something that's working and we've kind of dabbled with it working, instead of maybe looking for something totally new, how can you double down on that a little bit more to, to get even more out of it? Good. Awesome especially have Dave do it. I mean, I'm going to pause here and just give you something that I've been doing a ton lately. I've been sending out 
$25 and $50 Visa cards like hotcakes. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm going to do it here. We'll see. But, you know, so jo I know, I know Josh and, and, and Dave out in Washington state. And what I've been doing lately is kind of pitting some of my clients against each other or like a, two business partners, get some competitive juices going. Or I'll tell you exactly what I did last night or yesterday afternoon. One of my clients called and there's a task that he really needs to get done. Um, and he's really busy and I've set a deadline for him a couple times and he's agreed to it and we've missed it. And I said, all right, here's the deal, bud. Deadline, Friday, five o'clock PM Eastern standard time. I had to put Eastern standard in there cause he's central. I didn't want him sneaking around anything. You're going to get this task done and you're going to send it to me. And when you do that, I'm going to send you a $20 bill in the mail. Literally, you're going to get a $20 cash bill. and I'm going to be so happy to send it to you. If you don't get it done by then, you have to send me 20 bucks. Instantly, the demeanor, his demeanor, his attitude, what he was saying just totally changed. And he went into competitive mode like, there's no chance I'm going to send you that $20 bill. It's something important for him to do. Like making those calls, that's something important that you could do. You know, so even if, if there's multiple people within the same business doing it, have a little fun with it. I've been using that little tactic to get the competitive juices flowing big time lately. So just share that because I know Josh and, and Dave there. Cool. All right. Another uh, example for you. If you do the home show, uh, this is just kind of a, another way of, this is a little bit more sales than necessarily previous clients. But if you're at a home show to prepare, I call it 5P, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Um, if you want a really 5P for a home show, make sure you have an email already queued up, ready to rock and set up. If you use Gmail, maybe you have a canned response. If you use Gmail and you're not using canned response, by the way, write that down. That might be your takeaway. Look that up or ask me about in the Q&A side. Um, you know, you have a home show follow-up and as you 5P for the home show, have this email ready to go. And before you leave the, uh, the home show that day or that night, um, make sure that you copy and paste this email and anybody that you had a really strong uh, conversation with, anybody that you are set to call to set up an appointment, maybe you did set up an appointment, send them an email that just says, it was very nice to meet with you at our booth. Look forward to our next conversation. In the meantime, just wanted you to link, link you to this or that. Professional, solid follow-up. They're talking to a bunch of other people, including yourself. Um, so this is just another example that I, I tossed in here because we were talking about inviting people to home shows and this is a little extra add-on that I tossed in there. Um, open, show, open house at your showroom. I saw one of my clients, actually Lloyd's Cabinet Shop here. They have a really nice showroom. They put on something for their 50th anniversary several years back. Um, they had several, they have a, their own shop and they make their own cabinets and they were creating birdhouses. Uh, it brought a lot of kids in, a lot of parents in and just got some good buzz and something cool of value that everybody enjoyed. So, you know, an open house at your showroom, there's a myriad of ways to go about that. Um, you know, and invite previous clients to and also educational homeowner seminars you guys may just in if you're clicking around to other remodelers you may have seen a lot of different ways that uh, this is done I'll pull up just an example from uh, Brian Sebring Sebring design remodel out in the Chicago area um, our May 18th so he just moved it to the 21st that's fair that's fine um, but he's got an event on September 21st that people can RSVP for and it's just, you know, if you're thinking about remodeling your home, what are the questions that you need answered before you remodel? You know, here's our best practices on how to choose the right person to know how long it's going to take, to know how much money it's going to be. This is a great thing to reach out to past clients about that they can invite friends, family to, that they can forward on to somebody that they've, that they know are thinking about remodeling. Um, it's just a really nice outreach. Or maybe they're thinking about doing another project and it could be a way for you to reconnect with them. All right. Awesome. So that's number two. Number three. Let me pause there. Give me a takeaway. I need, I need three or four or five takeaways so far. Kyle, I've heard that before, but I haven't been doing it. I'm going to start doing it. Um, you know, I never thought of doing it that way. I'm going to do this. Give me some takeaways on something you've heard so far. I'm going to go full, full video mode. Come on, Barb, Carrie, Dan, Dennis, Diane, Jason, Jerry, Jim, Josh, Kimberly, Meredith, Norm, 
Scott? Doing an event at our location is something we plan to do. Okay. Excellent. You know, Rhonda, my, my first thing that comes to my mind is for that is like, when, when are you planning on doing it? Like setting even just a goal for when you're going to have it done. We're going to have this, you know, it's probably going to be a fall thing. So we're going to have this done uh, in the month of September. So by September 30th, 2019, we will have had an event at our showroom. Now all of a sudden we've got a finish line that we can start working backwards from. Good. Um, we have a schedule that we follow for calling and checking in our previous clients. Meredith, awesome. Awesome. Um, how is it working is one of my thoughts there. You know, the cadence of it, how you're making calls. I was working with one of my longtime clients here recently and they, they were making really consistent three, six, nine, 12 month calls after the project's done, but they've just been leaving a lot of voicemails. And I said, like, let's test this. Let's not be romantic about the way we've always done it. Like, let's be okay with breaking it a little bit. And they changed a couple of those to just sending a text message. And they've been getting more interaction, more engagement than if they picked up the phone and called. So Meredith, I love that you're doing it. Um, don't rest on your laurels. Keep thinking about how could we make this even more effective? Are we doing it too often? Are we doing it too infrequent? You know, can it be... Um, via text and phone calls. Just a few things to think about there. Awesome. Um, Scott Sebring is a rock star. Yeah, you know, well, if you told me I was a rock star, like my head swells, I can't leave my office. Brian is a rock star and he's stinking the most humble guy I know. It's obnoxious. Absolutely obnoxious. He's a good dude. Um, Google can, so Lisa, you said uh, Google can what? Uh, canned response. If you use Gmail, um, install the canned response feature. You'll love it. Uh, we do have a seminar on Saturday in our showroom, remodeling with your pet. Dennis, cool. Bam, there's so many ideas that come to mind related to that. You know, so often if it's Saturday, like having your designers, having your, your guys in the office there, just start picking up the phone and calling some people, calling prospects that we haven't heard from in a while that uh, said, hey, we have an event this Saturday. That personal outreach goes a long ways of turning, you know, the attendance from, you know, 12 or 15 up to 20 or 25. So go into full press mode on that. Um, we do not have a goal around it, but Brian got me all amped up in Vegas about the workshops. All right, cool. You know, so, so Josh, that's, you know, like, like I said at the beginning, you got to pick and choose, right? It's, it's a great idea. It's also a lot of stinking work, you know, and if you have a small um, previous client list, that's a factor, you know, of how big of a list of prospects and clients that we're calling out. Um, are you going to put the proper budget behind it? Sometimes you got to advertise, whether it's Facebook advertising, some strategic local things. Um, also, make sure you're getting your strategic partners involved and in inviting people. Maybe you have one of your key strategic partners, trade partners, as one of the speakers there so that they have more onus to promote it and the responsibility to get butts in the seat are spread out. Um, cool. Um, same for us, Josh. We don't get many people in our showroom seminars, but each time we seem to get some business from a few people who come. You know, if your showroom, Dennis, it's, it's interesting, right? Sometimes we do something, I, I found that with speaking. Sometimes over the years as I've spoken to different home builder associations, like, oh crap, there's only 12 people here. Ugh. You know, a lot of times those are my favorites, number one uh, workshops that I do. And other times they end up being just as profitable, if not more than bigger ones. Right. So the fact that being consistent with it, continuing to learn what worked and what didn't at the end of that seminar, just doing a quick what worked and what didn't and continue to improve them. Um, good. I started doing speaking engagements and investors meetups. Awesome. Rhonda, thank you. You are a rock star, Kyle, but don't do that too often because I get too uh, ego centered. Um, good idea. I'll have to check out how it's going. That is cool. Um, all right. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for your feedback there. All right, so let's move on to um, number three. And it was actually, I, I was touching on it a little bit with what uh, Meredith made me think about it as she was saying, we're, we're following up and doing stuff with our previous clients currently. Uh, this whole number three is really focused on how we reach out to our previous clients in the 12 months after the job is done. Just a really critical time to be excellent at making sure we're following up to make sure we don't collect that final payment and then just disappear. And some of this is just ensuring that we're giving them a remarkable experience, you know, and fixing things and being a tough man. They, they even called me, you know, three months after the project's done just to check in on things, things like that can go a long way. So related to um, 
to number three of be remarkable, what to do in the 12 months after the job is done. Here's, here's one kind of way of approaching it and the templates and kind of the verbiage that I'm using here will be in the PDF that I'll send out along with the recording. Um, you can send out a kind of on day one, just a how did we do client satisfaction survey? You know, just pretty, pretty standard. Um, a lot of you may use like a guild quality type program like that. Um, for all my clients, I, I use a program called WooFu. Um, and set up all my clients underneath that. But just a simple client satisfaction survey. How did we do? Um, making sure we're at least sending that out to them and making it easy for them to fill that out and give true feedback. Bonus points, even better if you do this in person. Triple bonus points if you've collected the final payment and then you set up this meeting a week later and have a, just a really solid, you know, what worked and what didn't? What did you like about doing business with us? Where did we struggle? What an amazing way to ensure remarkable experience and also just to get better at, at your business. Um, the way I have it set up is when they fill out this client satisfaction survey, uh, which takes some, yeah, so here's kind of an example of it. You know, just basic, you know, different parts of the process. Uh, what did you enjoy most about doing business with us? Is there anything else you'd like to share? What did you do, uh, fail to meet expectations? Down here, when they, if they select one through eight, and then they select submit at the bottom. It just takes them, so this question is, how likely is it that you will recommend us to a friend or colleague? If they select one through eight, it just takes them to a page that says, thanks so much for your feedback, have a nice day, basically. And then if they select nine or 10, it takes them to a page that says, thank you so much for your feedback. Um, here's what you wrote for the answer to what did you enjoy the most about doing business with us? Could you copy and paste this and click the Google link below to leave us a Google review? Clever, right? It's been working awesome. Where people are already in the mindset, we've made it easy where they can just copy and paste it. I'm seeing a lot of my clients have this satisfaction survey come through and then like five minutes later, I just go to their Google page and exactly what the person wrote on the what did you enjoy doing business with us and what the Google review was, just match up. It's working really, really nice. Um, so it's just a thought there. You know, whether you do it like that, making sure that five days in, maybe five days after the job is done, asking for that Google review, if not before, even earlier than that. So in, in this PDF, we've got just a really nice, simple email template that you can use for that. If somebody during the Q&A time wants to ask me more about Google reviews, I'm very opinion, more opinionated, more fired up about them right now than I ever have been before. Um, at the six month mark, you can send them a quick check-in email. I just wanted to thank you again for choosing, fill in the blank, for your Molly project. We truly enjoyed working with you. We like to touch base with clients six months after the project to make sure that you don't have any unanswered questions about maintenance and care. Please let me know if we can be of service. We're always here to help in any way we can. Nice little touch point. Um, you could do something similar to that at the nine month mark. You could, instead of emailing, you could make a phone call with a similar message. Um, at the one year mark, here's kind of an example of happy birthday. Your modeling project just turned one. Can you believe it's been a full year since we completed your Amali project? We thought now would be a great time to thank you again for your business. We value it more than you know. Look forward to helping you or your friends out again in the future. So the point here in this third simple way of staying in touch with previous clients is to make sure in that year after the project's done that we're really excellent at staying, staying in, touch, in touch with them and top of mind with them. Um, somebody should have said, hey, Kyle, you're going through all of these, these uh, templates and examples, but you forgot to share your screen again. Come on, people. So it's all in here. Everything that I was kind of going over and reading through. All right, so that's number three. Number four, as far as simple ways to be staying in touch with our previous clients. Where are you guys? This webinar has been perfect thus far. And then you guys just dropped the ball on not reminding me there. Come on. Some smart Alex is going to say, or you could have remembered yourself, Kyle. Or Bailey, my assistant, like literally right in there, could have sent me a quick note to remind me. Bailey. Josh Shetty just got lost in my eyes. That happens a lot. I was actually at, at Vayner. My, my eyes today are a little bit better. I was at Vayner Media. I went and spent the day with Gary Vee and his team on Tuesday. It was very cool. But it worked out where my flight back was already kind of a late flight. It got delayed. Uh, weather happened, electrical. I didn't get to sleep Wednesday morning, I guess, until 3.34 a.m. So yesterday was a coffee-fueled day. My eyes yesterday were not as dreamy. All right, cool. Uh, Meredith, I'll get back to that question in a minute. 
Uh, next, number four, number five, connect with them on social media. Your clients are on Facebook. Your, a lot of your clients are probably on Instagram. Um, if a lot of your clients are business people, they're probably on LinkedIn. Making sure that we have it as part of our, even our sales process or a checkbox at the end of the project to connect with them. I'm perfectly comfortable. I've, I decided several years ago after debating it, um, do I want my clients to be friends on Facebook? And I decided that I did. Other people want to keep those things separate. So make that decision, but make sure you're connected with them on LinkedIn make sure, or on the social media. Make sure they are, have been invited um, to your business Facebook page, your Instagram feed. Um, just making sure that that's happening. There's a lot of, this is just a simple way to make sure your business is staying top of mind for them. It's easy for them to share a piece of content with that neighbor and friend of theirs who they were just talking the other day about remodeling. Hey, here's the company that we've used in the past. It just makes sense, right? So put in that extra effort to make sure that you're connected uh, with them on social media. Okay, a couple thoughts on this, you know, just general remodeling related content that you could be using. Um, and also, there's a guarantee if you've been visiting your job sites, if you take pictures of your work in progress, there is interesting content on your iPhone or your phone right now. That could be great content of just specific stuff that's going on in your business, little things that you do on job sites. The way I like to kind of think about this is if you had an ideal, so pause, what we're talking about here is just content that's good for social media. Um, if you have an ideal client standing next to you and you're just about to walk into a beautiful kitchen project that you're doing and you're about to walk into the, into there, what are the things that you're going to point out to them? There's so many little things that you do on jobs. There's so many interesting design features. There's telling them about how you open this, this, uh, you know, wall up here, maybe specific products that you use, maybe something about what's behind the drywall and how you make sure it's done properly so it stands the test of time. There's a lot of opportunities for that. So put, your, put, put yourself in that mindset, whether it's through a picture and you know, two sentences of what it is, whether it's through a quick video that says, hey, Kyle here with Kyle's Remodeling. What I wanted to show you today is one little thing that we do that goes above and beyond to make sure that your project is not only excellent now, but even five years from now, you know, something like that. So social media is definitely a way that you can be staying in touch with your previous clients well. Um, and the next number five, you know, e your email list. You know, what's interesting about Facebook is, you know, if you have a thousand people that follow you on Facebook, if you've been watching that, your organic reach, there's the natural number of people that are able to see when you post has just been going down and down and down. Um, you know, Instagram is still pretty solid. LinkedIn has kind of had a resurgence a little bit lately. Um, and your email, and you can't control it, right? If Facebook says, you know what? I'm not going to show it to any of the people that like your page unless you promote it or pay to advertise. It's, it's up to them. Like they control that, right? There's not much we can control there. Should we be using it? Yes, because people are there and the attention is still there and we still do get some organic reach. But when it comes to your email list, while we can't guarantee deliverability, it is something that you can control of who you're sending it to, you know, when you're sending it. It's not something that's drastically going to get cut back like Facebook has in the organic reach over the last few years. So it just, it is a very caught, sending an email to your previous clients is just a no brainer, cost effective, proper thing to be doing as far as staying in touch with your previous clients. For them to get an email from you once a month, that is just a quick kind of remodeling related article. They're seeing your logo, they're seeing your photo, they're seeing your information month in and month out consistently is something that should be part of the mix here. It's not the be all end all, right? This is one of several ways that we should be staying in touch with previous clients, but it's one that um, is just not being done by the vast majority of remodelers and it makes all the sense in the world to do that. Oh, Scott, stop it. Scott said, I wish I could find someone to create a monthly newsletter for me, dot, 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 dot. It's like he's been on webinars before and he's just feeling it. He's just feeling it that Kyle's about to go into full pitch mode. He is just going to try to sell us this remodeler's autopilot and tell us how amazing it is. And hey, I tricked you. You've been on here for 40 minutes. Now I'm going to sell you something. I mean, Scott, you're not that far off, but if you guys know me at all, you know that I'm not going to go into crazy pitch mode, but... That is a beautiful segue. Um, so part of, what, uh, part of what I'm doing. So let me, let me tell you what Remodeler's Autopilot is. 
I'm going to do it till 1245. If you studied webinars, people would say, and then pitch for 15 minutes, eh, whatever. If you're interested, you're interested. I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. You can take action on it. We're going to do it for four minutes. I'll tell you how it works. And then in the last 15 minutes, I'm going to go back and answer some questions that you guys had um, that I saw pop through and also just open Q&A um, on this topic or any topics that you guys have. So thank you, Scott. That was very sweet of you. Um, if you go to remodelersautopilot.com, and I'll put that in the old thing here. I've been doing this for years. I've been, I've been creating email newsletters, uh, emails, and social media posts to go out to my clients that I work with one-on-one -on -one or that are part of my mastermind groups uh, for years and years. And I'm part of a mastermind group that uh, consists of just different construction industry consultants, like Vicki Suter, Dan Ballman. I think Dan's on the on the call. Actually, is he still? Yeah, he is. Dan, um, Diane Gilson, I think I may have saw her name earlier. Uh, for about 10 of us that have been part of it. And we went to Phoenix for an in-person uh, two-day retreat in January. And it was kind of my time on the hot seat. And I was going through my business and telling them, you know, this is where I'm generating revenue. This is kind of my goals for this upcoming year. And a couple of them, I think Vicky took full credit for it. I can't remember if it was her or a combination of them. But they said, Kyle, you have a specific problem that you see in the market. Remodelers need to be staying in touch with their most valuable marketing asset, their previous clients and prospects. It's a no brainer. You believe it to your core and it works. You've been doing it for your clients for years and it works. Why don't you just make that a standalone product to solve that problem? Like there's your problem. You're not staying in touch. Here's a way to do that super easy, super turnkey and effectively. Um, and I came out of that and I said, you know what? You guys are right. And, and did that. So the way it works, um, if I scroll down to the bottom, not to put any pressure on you, but if you want to take advantage of a $1 trial for it, you only have one day, 11 hours and 11 minutes. My business coach who I've been working with convinced me to do a $1 trial for the first month as I've been promoting this. So what it is, is a done for you email newsletter that you get um, each and every month. Near the end of the month, you'll get an email um, from Bailey at this, at this point, the way we have it set up, that'll have, there's a couple different designs you can choose from. This one says four ways to take your kitchen remodel to the next level. And as a time to freshen up your bathroom, it's just a little different format for it. Oh, there you go, Bailey. Bailey just said, share my screen. Thank you. We learn, we improve. All right. So there we go. Um, I'm at just remodelersautopilot.com and you'll get an email with your logo, with your photo, with your information on there. Um, and basically say, hey, is there anything you want to tweak, anything you want to change? And if it looks good, let us know, and we send it out for you to your list. Uh, if you want to change anything or you have a home show coming up or maybe you wrote a blog post and you wanted to feature that on there, we can do that for you. So that comes just each and every month consistently. And then there's also six social media posts that you get to choose from each month. And what you do is you just select the ones that uh, you want to have posted, and a great majority of my clients, they just select, can you post this for us? And we just get the admin rights to your Facebook page and go ahead and schedule those out for the month. Um, those are, these are a little bit more general kind of remodeling uh, posts. They're not kind of the specific custom ones that I also want you to be posting on social media, but they keep things up to date. So often in these two areas, if you've thought about sending an email to your list in the past, it's prob maybe it's been a year. I think we're, we're onboarding somebody right now and I think the last time they sent something from their MailChimp account to their list was like four years ago, three years ago. All the intention in the world, I'm sure, of doing that, but you guys are busy. There's a lot to get done. So this is just a very cost-effective, simple way for you to execute on number four and number five on the list that we covered. Uh, so it's a dollar for the first month, and then after that, it's $125 a month. A couple other thoughts on it. There's no long-term commitment to it. They uh, risk free. You guys know me for the most part. I think most everybody knows me pretty well. So, um, you know, there's a guarantee behind it. If it's not a fit for you, you know, we'll talk about it and, and uh, part ways. But I think if you're like a lot of my clients who are using this, it's going to be just a really nice part of your overall marketing plan. You know, one other thought related to it. A lot of my clients kind of repurpose the email, the newsletter content um, and make it as a blog post on their website. Because similarly, we need to be creating blog content and oftentimes, um, it's just been months or months since we've done that. So it's kind of another benefit of it. So if you go to remodelersautopilot.com, you can see the details. You can sign up.
And uh, the onboarding process is we get your information, we get the dollar payments, we send you over a form that we need to see if you have like an email list already organized. We help you organize and format your email list. We set up the technology aspect of it. We set up the email template, go back and forth on that with you, and then we get it rocking. Cool. So my goal this my goal this month is to get 20 remodelers signed up for it. We've got 11 so far. So we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. All right, cool. Um, all right, so some open Q and A time. Give me some uh, give me some questions that you guys might. All right, cool. Let me know, I just clicked on the air conditioner. Um, if that noise is bugging you, it should work fine though. All right, so Meredith, you had asked a question earlier. Um, what are some ways to get people to complete the surveys? I feel like we send them out and they never get completed. Interesting that you, you kind of bring that up given the feedback I gave you earlier of make sure we're, you know, not the phrase I, I use, it's Gary V phrase of don't be romantic about, you know, the way you've always done it. Um, if it's not working, you know, asking this question and challenging why it's not working and trying and testing new things is awesome. So thanks for asking that. A um, couple things related to that is making sure that they're aware that it's coming. Making sure that they're aware that it's coming, that they know that, hey, at the end of the project um, or in the next couple of days, you're going to get a survey for, from us and we'd really love for you to just give us your good, honest, transparent feedback on that. Um, or you're collecting that final payment and you just let them know ahead of time, that can go, that can go a really long ways in making it happen. Um, and then the other thing, just pick up the phone. If it's, if it's really, it depends on how many client, clients you're working with, but if you're working through four, five, six, seven clients and projects a month, you know, put a little more hand-to-hand hand -hand combat to it. You know, follow up to that email, just saying, hey, I wanna make sure that you got this. Um, give them a little bit of a deadline. Hey, if you could fill this out in the next week, we would really appreciate it. So there's, there's three or four ideas that you could, that you could try. All right, cool. Um, what are some other questions here? I'm going to kind of go back up because I saw some ones earlier. Nah, that's going to get too confusing. Um, all right. Got our two actions written down and they will be done by the end of the day, says Josh. So yes, Q and A time slash takeaways. We are adding a six and 12 month reminder in our project management software to keep us in front of past clients. That's number one. And then number two, getting that list a little bit more organized. Excellent. Like two very practical steps. The list thing, you guys heard me talk about that earlier. Your client list, your prospect list, that is your most valuable marketing asset. 10,000, I'm trying to think of what number I'll put in there, but I'll put it in there. 10,000 likes on Facebook compared to your previous client list of 400, I'm gonna take that previous client list all day long. It's more valuable. You've built no like and trust with them. You've got their name, their email, their address. You can stay in contact with them. So just emphasizing that, getting your list organized. Sometimes it's tedious, it's worth it. Keep it up to date. There's a lot that we can do with it when it's organized. A lot of times we're, we're not able to do anything with it because we're not, we don't have it created, all right? Um, and then adding a six and 12 month reminders in our project management software to keep us in front. Yeah. Go, I can't remember if you guys are using Builder Trend or Co-Construct, but go into your template for that after the job is done and set that task, you know, maybe even copy and paste some of the template that I was using. So you are reminded of why you're reaching out. Hey, it's been six months since we completed your project. We just want to check in, da, da, da. Co-Construct, yeah. Get that set up in there. And I think something that's, that's important to just say on that is it's great to have the system. It's great to get the reminders make sure we're getting them done, right? I don't know about you guys over the years, but I've been in a habit of snoozing a reminder, maybe ignoring a reminder. Man, where the rubber hits the road and where a good business turns into an excellent business is doing those little things, executing the little things. Good. Teresa, takeaway you have is set up quarterly showroom learning events. Awesome. You know, and, and you're saying quarterly, I think that's a good goal. I would just simplify it even more. When's your first one? Like, don't, don't worry so much about two, three, four, five. Let's really focus in on the first one, set a date for that and figure out a topic for that and get that executed. All right, awesome. Um, Jim said, lead time to set up an onboard contractor client uh, contractor client for remodelers autopilot program. Well, by golly, that's a great, great question, Jim. That, they call that in the business a buying question. Um, typically what 
what it takes is it depends on we're, we're dialing it in pretty good now we've got our checklist to go through um, to get it set up but our goal is within I think we set a goal for it. I think within 10 days is our aim from the time you fill out that sign up form at remodelersautopilot.com to the time we get that set up um, and get the first email out our goal is 10 days let's make it happen good I love the question by the way Jim um, but we're also kind of getting started with it so I think we've we've been missing that a little bit as we uh, as we get things started but all good um, is there a customized strategic content available specifically for plum and companies um, not yet not yet I have the guy that I uh, my good friend of mine slash business coach who helped me kind of work through the deliverables and the and the um, landing page and all of that for this program he is a uh, what's his specialty um, painters he's got a big background on the painting side so creating something like this for painters autopilot or whatnot you know isn't is a thought but I'm really sticking to my lane I have gone very very deep in working with kitchens bathroom you know home addition remodelers that's my bread and butter that's my business that's the great 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 majority of my clients so as such the content that we're creating is better thought out well thought out there um, it's, it's very specific for kitchens baths additions so right now and for the foreseeable future, um, that's where we're sticking. Cool. Scott, thanks. No, thanks for being here, man. Um, what are some other questions? Some other takeaways from this topic? What do we got? What do we got? And then even if you just want to encourage me, you say, hey, Kyle, I love this for Miles Autopilot thing. It's kind of a no-brainer. I'm going to sign up. You can even write, I'm signing up in there. I know several of you are clients of mine and some of you that are on here have actually already signed up. Thank you very much. Cool. Um, Takeaway. I've listened to Kyle so many times that even today I get so much from it. Give me it. Tell me what, Rhonda. Give me a what. Um, Jim, what are some of the ongoing measurables for the program effectiveness? I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you something that I got here this morning. Uh, da, 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 da. And I don't think Aaron. I don't think Aaron would mind. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna pull it up. Um, you know, so as far as ongoing measurables, we want to make sure that, you know, how many, how many opens and clicks and engagement are we getting? So let's talk just specifically about the email list. We want to be paying attention to that. We want to be always growing our email list up, you know, but as far as the measurables, the KPIs, the deliverables, flat out leads is the top KPI, right? There's, there's those soft benefits of it of, man, I've been seeing your content or, hey, it was great to see you or, Hey, it was, you know, I, I uh, saw that you're at the home show. I didn't, I wasn't able to make it like people that just respond back to your email. Hey, it was great to hear from you. I don't have anything going on right now, but I'll keep you in mind in the future. There's value there, but here's one that uh, Aaron received uh, just the other day. Hi, Aaron. I'm ready to remodel my kitchen. And I also want to make plans to add a bathroom. I don't have a designer to plan out what those will look like. Do you do design build projects? By the way, I'm still loving my screen room you built for me. It's held up very well. So Aaron forwarded this to me this morning. I was on the phone with them. Um, and he was telling me about it. I said, dude, you got to forward it to me. Um, and this guy, Martin, um, he'd done a project, that screen room, like three years ago. Aaron hasn't done squat for staying in touch with his previous clients. And we organized the list and we're just sending it out. This was the second month that, that Aaron's been sending this out. So, you know, Jim, I mean, that's the biggest one, right? The biggest one is just staying, staying top of mind. That's kind of soft and it's good and we know it's, and we know it's the right thing to do. But man, when we see those leads come through, which it just, it doesn't happen every month, right? Depends on how big your list is. But when we see it, because we're being consistent with it, that's the, that's the creme de la creme. Um, Barb, come on, just sign up. Thank you, Kyle. Seriously, thank you. I want to talk to you anyway. Actually, I've been meaning, we exchanged voicemails a couple weeks ago. So yes, let's talk, Barb. I got lots of time next week, or I might, I might try to sneak in a call with you tomorrow. Cool. Um, Rhonda, takeaways. I've listened to Kyle so many, oh, um, email list calls, asking for referrals, still trying to get a Google review. I do all my own social media, so, so that's good. Okay. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot there. And I think going back to one of the things I said at the, at the top of just picking one, you know, so here we are, we're on the doorstep of June, believe it or not. You know, what I recommend for you there, Rhonda, is I'm looking at that and we'll talk more about it on the Queen Bees Remodeler Circle call in an, an hour and 35 minutes, um, is to pick one of those, right? You're busy. We're all busy. Like what's one of those that I'm really going to focus in on during the month of June. And if it's Google reviews, all of your focus goes towards that. And then in July, you pick something else that hyper focus instead of, um, you know, splintering 
uh, is good. Love my Queen Bee's group. Cool. Awesome. All right, what are some other takeaways? Anthony, Brandon, Gary, Dan, Dennis, Diane, Jerry, Jim, Norm, Wes, Travis. What's another takeaway you have here? More question about uh, anything or Remodelers Autopilot. Go to remodelersautopilot.com. Let's get two more takeaways or two more questions, then we'll call it a wrap. Yes, I'd be happy to review the cost, Teresa. So it's it's a one dollar for the first month, just to get things up and running. Um, just give you an opportunity to kind of see it and feel it and see if it makes sense. And then it's one hundred twenty-five dollars a month thereafter. So it's the email, the customized email each month. It's the six social media posts that you get to choose from each month. Repurpose that email as a blog post, another benefit. Um, and it's just hands off. Right, it's very, very easy for you to be consistent month in and month out with it. Um, Barb just said, "What's the Queen Bee's group?" She's like, "I'm a Queen Bee. Why am I not part of this group?" I'll tell you about it uh, on our call, Barb. It's a mastermind group for Modeler Circle Mastermind Group. I have that's their that's their name of their group. Um, Josh, focus. Um, <laughs> thanks for that reminder. It's easy to get stuck on checking tasks off the list and letting the biz development side slide. Amen, brother. Um, focus. There, that's an acronym. Follow one course until success. Follow one course until success. My, uh, my wife, somehow they came up the other day. I said, Sarah, focus. Follow one course until success. And she's heard all these, line, these one-liners. I mean, you can imagine living with me what that must be like. And she's like, I've never heard. I kind of like that one. What was that again? So, yeah, Josh, you, and you all capitalize that. Follow one course until success. It's so, it, I'll put one more exclamation mark on that. I have one non-remodeling client, IT company in Connecticut, Inc. 5000, fastest growing businesses. They're, you know, I'm, I'm kind of their marketing director, I've held, held on to them as a client. I learn a ton from them. Um, what's been super interesting is, is their business has grown and we have our quarterly executive team meetings. In the past, years ago, our, we'd come out of these quarterly meetings with like six initiatives, and five initiatives and all these things. And you're gonna do this and you're gonna do that. It's been interesting as the business has grown our list that we're focusing on and working on continues to shrink and shrink and shrink. And it's true for them and it's true for you as a remodeler. If you have two employees, five employees by yourself, 10 employees, we need to consistently decide and focus down what is the most important thing for me to work on when it comes to my business. You know, and when it comes to, and I'll, I'll tie it in with Remodelers Autopilot, you've got way more important things to do than writing an email, than coming up with a creative article. Let me do that for you. Let us do that for you. So you can be consistent with it. You have all the desire in the world to do it. You know, it's smart. You know, it can be effective, right? But you have all these other things to do it. So if you can find resources like this, that for an affordable monthly amount, make it super easy to check, check getting that done consistently um, each month, then it's, then it's no brainer. You've got to constantly be looking at ways to, you know, get more done without necessarily just adding a bunch of hours to your, to your work. I think the consistency of it is just so key, being consistent with it. Cool. Um, the survey that automatically sends follow-up email for the Google review sounds amazing. Need to work with Kyle and Bailey to get my email created. Carrie, it's sitting there waiting for you to do it. Let's, let's knock it out. Um, Bailey, make that a follow-up task. Reach out to Carrie about that and get that set up. Cool. Awesome, guys. Thank you for dialing in. We're one minute to the top of the hour, so we're going to call it good. Um, again, go to remodelersautopilot.com, the dollar trial. It's good for the end of the day tomorrow, till the end of the day tomorrow, end of May. Um, Jerry, thank you. Great job. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys coming. And we will talk to you next time. Later.